Okay, so we're going to do the select by color range assignment. There's a video on how to do it using Photoshop already. Uh, 02.2 select by color range using the Photoshop files. However, we're going to be doing uh, the same thing basically using color range. Uh, but that, I mean, photo P, color range in photo P. So I'm going to open up a new tab, get my photo P running. I already have a bookmark for it, photop.com. Wait for it to load up. And there it is. And what we want to do is we want to get this uh, picture of the Texas Capitol and we're going to select by color range the, uh, the sky, the blues in the sky. Uh, don't use a uh, texascapital.psd. That's rather a large file. Uh, let's use a smaller one, texascapital.jpg. I'm going to click on it. It'll open in a separate window, and that way I can right-click and say copy image. That way I can go back to Photo P, tell it to create a new document by clicking File, New, and uh, it already sort of knows what size it is. It's 720 by 478. Here I'll call this uh, capital and uh, I'll keep the DPI at 72 and we're fine. I'll create and I have a new document with the background uh, in white. I'm going to paste the image that I just copied so I can say edit and paste. I could have also pressed control V and that would have pasted it. Now that the image is pasted, I have multiple layers. I have the background, which is white, and that's fine. I'll keep it as such. Layer one, I'll double click on the name so that I can say this is the capital. And let's start to make those selections. If I press control zero, I'm zoomed in as much as I'm going to be. I press control one, that's 100%. That brings me way closer. I'll press control zero again. You can always press control plus or control minus to zoom in and out. I'm going to go to the uh, select menu and tell it to select by color range. I'm going to get a uh, window very similar to what we have seen prior in uh, Photoshop. I'm going to uh, make sure that I get the right mode. I'm in currently in replace mode. I want to be adding to the selection. So I'm going to click on the plus and then hover on top of the image and start to click. I'll click once twice, three times, and I'm clicking where it's blue or kind of blue. You'll notice that the selections are being made all over the place. We have the same problem that we did with Photoshop, and that is that it gets confused a little bit below, but we'll fix this as soon as we're done with all of these selections. I'll click OK, and that makes it the initial selection. It's all of the sky as, as I want it, and then the stuff that I didn't want below. And like I said, this is the same thing that happened in Photoshop, and so we can fix it. I'm going to go to the Select menu again to, to select the uh, inverse. That way, I am only selecting the sky. I'm only selecting what's blue. Everything else is stuff that we don't need. And thankfully, we can get rid of that in very much the same or similar fashion anyway as we can in Photoshop. I'm going to click on the Rectangle Select. And with that tool selected, I'm going to look at the options. Currently, it's on replace mode. You'll see where I am up here at top left. Next, there's the unite. And this is something that adds to the selection we already have. Then there's subtract. And then there is intersect. Since we have already selected the inverse of the sky, etc., I'm going to select unite. Selecting unite then will allow me to go outside of the box a little bit here click hold down the mouse button and drag and you'll see then that it begins to get rid of the areas that were selected that I didn't necessarily want. I'll do that a couple of times make sure that I am only selecting inside of the uh, capital area. I'm not going to bother too much with what's going on here. I'll leave that alone because the sky behind the trees works fine maybe clean it up a little bit here by drawing some squares inside of the capital itself. I'm not going to mess with some of the details. This can all be done in post-production if needed. Once I'm satisfied with everything that I've taken off from the selection, and I'm just drawing squares to get rid of that stuff, then, oh, I got a couple more windows here. 
then I'll do the same thing that I would have done in Photoshop and that is that I'm going to create a mask and I press control zero to zoom out and since I am on the capital itself on the capital layer I can click on the mask at rather yes add a raster mask and now I have a selection of the capital and there's a little bit of the sky still there but that's okay you know we can still clean it up a little bit but basically we have made a selection using the color range to get rid of the sky now that the sky is gone what can we do we well I'm gonna go back to the assignment itself there is the clouds.jpg file I'm going to click on it it opens up these clouds I will right click and copy the image go back to Photopea select the background layer so that anything that I paste edit paste falls on top of the background and is behind the capital so now I have an image of the capital with the original sky gone now I have these uh, clouds in the back you can bring in your own clouds if you want uh, you can uh, you can do whatever you want with the, these clouds you can rotate you can play with the uh, layer effects I click too much and uh, do color change etc uh, but in about five six minutes we were able to do the this in photo P uh, with equal or maybe even less effort that we did in Photoshop make sure that you save your file five file save as PSD you save it to your uh, Google Drive I'm on a PC right now but save it to your Google Drive as a PSD so all the layers are still there and turn it in for a grade please thank you